Hello everybody, this is Chad McCray for IndieScape Games. Today is going to be an after action report on my entry into the Brackies Game Jam. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Brackies Game Jam was a uh, game competition on itch.io. Um, we had a week to create everything from scratch. All of our code, all of our art, such as 3D models, textures, etc. And everything we created had to adhere to the, the competition theme which the theme was light and when I tell a lot of people that they don't quite get what that means when the competition is just light but it's your own interpretation and so my interpretation was I'm going to create a game that draws enemies to light I created the game uh, they desire fire they desire fire is kind of like a puzzle platform adventure dungeon crawler where as you move through the level uh, there's gonna be traps and monsters hidden about but they only chase you really when you are uh, carrying a torch. Uh, the torches are scattered about where, you know, if you have to place yours down to lower a trap, there's another one that you may be able to pick up later on. Or circle around an enemy and, and pick it back up. Uh, in my release trailer for the game, I showed the first five levels, and I'm going to show a little bit more of that today, but more as a developer than, you know, trying to get players to play the game. Here's my itch.io page with the Unity web player running. Some information about it. I have included the source code. I, I tried to come up with a short description that's readable for players who are rating the game and, and want to check it out. And I've gotten pretty good response and good feedback. And so I, I want to continue this idea into a full game with external artwork, third party artwork, and some help from friends with level design and new puzzles and new gameplay that I could incorporate. But this is how it stood uh, after a week of development. New game, uh, very simple. Um, I didn't have time to kind of create a tutorial, so I've got tool tips that I'm going to be displaying. And uh, as you can see, it's a kind of a top-down view, the level, and an arrow going straight ahead. So levels are defined by you know where you start and trying to always get to the end torch and so this one's a little bit more difficult there's something in the way but it says left click so I'm going to drop the torch see and it actually moves the wall out of the way and pick my torch back up and keep on going okay level three is a little bit more difficult again I have uh, dropped the torch but as you can see when I drop the torch there's one of the uh, first monsters and I'm going to sneak up behind him and try to s steal the torch and he's going to chase me um, but I could sneak right around him without any uh, ill side effect um, if I wouldn't do this level's fun where oh shoot oh shoot he's following me okay I dropped the torch he's surrounding the torch um, I I can make out where the walls are. I can now see the final torch. I can see him. I, I'll go ahead and complete. But one thing that actually happens is each level you go gets darker and darker, and the light, the the ambient light, gets darker and darker. Um, so it, that does require you to start picking up the torches. Okay, next level. There's a monster that way, a monster that way. So. Ah, okay. So now they're hugging out over the, the torch, but I can continue. And I, I did lose a few hit points. And uh, so that that's when you run out of hit points, you just start the same level over again. I don't start you all the way back at the beginning or anything like that. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, so now see I can sneak by. Uh, some of the levels actually have these fire pots, is what I call them, but they are um, things you can ignite and light yourself, and they, they'll give you one hit point back. Now, as you can see, it's very, very dark in this level. I can just make out the walls. Um, there's one of the fire pots. There you go. Oh, this level has the floor traps that if I run into them, they'll subtract one hit point and they slow you down. So. so 
Now see, do I want to try to steal this torch and try to get one hit point left? Ah, he hit me at the same time, so slowed me down, and I didn't really gain anything from laying that torch. I'm going to try to get by. Well, I can't. I can't continue. So that that's where the importance of picking up a torch comes in. Is this wall um, blocks it off, so you can't just run through the level and complete it. So, uh, oh, and it got me. So now I'm starting the level over again. There we go. Now these do start looking repetitive, but I, I use the same start kind of pattern um, multiple times because I only had a week to create everything. Ah, I didn't see him. Okay, well that's that's enough of gameplay. Um, there were a few more levels there than uh, what I showed in the, the release trailer. So now I, I want to talk about like the source code. Okay, so here's here's my layout. Um, I like to work in the traditional two by three window where I've got uh, you know the scene and the game windows open here, and the inspector project and uh, hierarchy tabs on the right. Uh, and let let me just first walk through about the assets folder. <clears throat> so I found a, a font I could use online, the Charlemagne Standard Bold. Uh, that's kind of like the success message here, um, I believe. Uh, anyways, uh, so I have my fonts folder, and, and that's that's where you can download that font. If you're using Windows, install it into your uh, C Windows and then fonts folder. Uh, if you want to use it in uh, another uh, piece of software, uh, materials are just flat materials. Say for the uh, the spikes, have a metallic. Um, appearance to them. Uh, models are just the raw imported FBX files. I've got an arrow, that's what you were seeing on the ground. Uh, fire pot is just the the pot you can ignite and gain one health point back. Our hero is uh, started as a cube actually and in Blender I kinda exported the um, the edges to create the shape and I was actually pretty happy with it even though it's definitely not triple A. Uh, spike floor are just the spikes that will uh, you know appear on the on the ground and uh, the torch object and this is what you can hold. Now notice none of these are, are textured and none of them uh, I, I don't even think they're unwrapped honestly so if you'd like to use those feel free uh, if you're just going to use plain uh, materials like I'm using uh, shouldn't be an issue if you want to apply your own textures you're gonna have to do your, own, do your own unwrapping prefabs are where I've taken the models and I've taken other game objects and I knew I wanted to reuse them so the prefabs folder are full of my my prefabs uh, one the first thing is the canvas uh, this is where I'm showing my mouse buttons that I can display uh, the health and the health text uh, and then the success message these all have um, a, a script applied um, to one of the behaviors in the scripts below of when display when not um, let's see what uh, finished torch so this one has the default brown um, material let me look what it's called the wood uh, material and if I drag it into the scene um, you'll see that it does have one child of flames and this is the particle system with the, the blue flames uh, feel free to modify these as, as much as you'd like um, it also has uh, the collision box this is uh, how close you need to be, be to um, collide with to uh, invoke the success message and wait three seconds until it loads the next level um, what else? Um, 
Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see, fire pot. This is kind of set up the same same way. It's uh, got a particle system under uh, as a child, and uh, it also has a box collider. And notice you have to get a lot closer and, and really have to run through it um, to um, invoke the trigger on the box collider. I also have a script called Firebot Firepot Behavior. Uh, this this script kind of awards the player the the one health back and etc. Our hero player is uh, what's in every scene. I, it's been tagged as a uh, player. It has a uh, transform of a uh, torch position. So when you pick up your torch, that's where it'll display. You can move that around. Yeah, that's kind of hard to see. Let me bring that up. The torch position, you can move around um, until it's where you're happy with if you want to switch hands or, or whatever. Uh, obstruction trigger. So these are the X's on the ground. And they're uh, composed of uh, two cubes, which create the actual X. No collider. Um, just for appearance so you know that you need to place a uh, a torch there and then there's an obstruction melter uh, just a creative name that has a box collider with a trigger so when to display the tooltip to right click or left click um, it has a uh, property for what the obstruction actually is so in this case it's the wall some of the walls I have actually moving down which is um, the move direction I have um, specified here so I knew I wanted to move it down three units um, over three seconds uh, let's see what else it also has an audio source because uh, when, for instance like when the walls move I have that um, wall move sound that I recorded and actually made a video about how I created that video or how I created that sound effect uh, let's see, obstruction wall is just the default wall with a box collider so the player cannot walk through the uh, wall to get to proceed through the level without first moving it out of the way, forcing the player to pick up a torch and forcing the monsters to then begin chasing the player. Um, player, this was my uh, first prototype um, before I had modeled my human. Um, or the hero player uh, it's it's essentially the same thing once I got the mechanics down for this player I uh, applied both components to the hero player the only difference being this actually looks like a human versus a, a capsule with a cube where an arm goes um, spike floor is exactly what it sounds like that's the spikes on the uh, ground and uh, the let me see, the trigger uh, is the spike floor behavior uh, using a box collider, so it won't actually block the user. Uh, I wanted them to be able to run through it, um, but it will subtract the health um, when the is trigger uh, collision is um, invoked. And uh, yeah, I was keeping track of each individual spike because I wanted um, to have them retract and come back, but I was having some bugs and just ran out of time before I could finish that kind of functionality. Uh, let's see, the torch. Oop. The torch is exactly what I say. These are the uh, torches that the, the player can run into, pick up, and carry. Uh, they have a a maximum lifespan uh, that gets subtracted periodically um, all handled by the torch behavior script um, when torch life is equal to or less than uh, zero this boolean has fire left gets uh, flipped to false and uh, the uh, flames will extinguish and just like the finished torch um, the torch object has a child um, of a particle system and these uh, these particles actually use a light 
and I needed a, a prefab for Torchlight and that's the next prefab uh, in my list and uh, oh okay so I guess I have um, two abstraction objects prefabs um, I believe I'm just using the obstruction trigger instead of this one um, again the everything I'm looking at was created in less than a week this folder is the scenes folder and I have a uh, the next folder is the scenes folder I've got um, uh, bake na uh, navigation meshes for each level that has different kind of layouts of the scene um, the different puzzles etc uh, the menu is uh, what I was showing you at the beginning of this video and then each um, scene afterwards is the progression and just clicking through there you can see how it gets darker and darker um, scripts folder I'm using all C sharp uh, scripts uh, I've I've labeled them exactly what they are camera behavior so what's the what's the uh, behavior of the camera and so just real quick the behavior of the camera is to find the player and look at um, the player's position clear, clear and simple uh, if I had different effects where I wanted to uh, transition cameras switch cameras I don't think I'd have it under behavior behaviors what actually interacts with the player um, uh, there's some classes like stalker attack this isn't proper uh, naming standards as a, a class is a supposed to be a noun not a verb um, but in this case the attack is a thing which follows semi follows it anyway. So that that's where all of our scripts are. Uh, sounds. I've got the three sound effects: grunt for when the monsters actually hit the player, the moving wall sound, which is again what I've recorded from. Um, uh, that I also have a video about, and then the pickup script is when you pick up and drop a torch. And then the last thing I've got are the textures, and these are just the um, things that show up in the user interface such as the empty mouse, the indie escape buttons on the main menu, the left mouse click, health, right mouse click, and then the success. Uh, things in packages are just the default things that get imported on a new project in, in Unity 5.x and that is the layout of the uh, project. I'm going back to HIO and uh, going to the game page again. Remember that you can download this source code um, right from our page and um, hovering over the wrong thing and uh, then all these assets and resources can be yours. Um, that's This competition was to number one challenge yourself to create a game in less than a week but also share knowledge amongst the community. If someone likes what I've done and want to learn how I did that they can either watch this video or download download my source code directly and um, open up the the code and figure out how I did something so I think that just about does it thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you next time